Hey guys, this is Reverend Sean, and I'm going to show you a couple different examples of the altars that I have set up. So here's the main one. We have, this is our meditation area. Uh, this we have, um, a, obviously, a statue of the Buddha. And we have the Buddhist flag on this side and one on the other side. And down below, we have our typical offerings. We have a green tara. We do have flour. We have a, some food, an apple. And we have water and a candle. And there's a stupa right there. And the here's, again, the statue of the Buddha. Up on top, I have an incense burner, and I keep a plant up there to uh, show that, you know, the Buddha did attain enlightenment underneath a, uh, a tree. So there we go. There's one of our little altars we have. Okay, here we are. Again, looking at the altar that we've set up here with the eight offerings. We'll notice, though, that we try to set it up um, with good intent. And there's a couple things that we do that with. One is we set each of the bowls the same distance apart. And each one of those bowls is about one grain of rice from each other, you know, sideways or whichever way you want to do it. I mean, if you have room, we don't quite have much, not much room here. Same, we also want to fill them to within one grain of rice from the top. And that's to kind of honor the work that the Buddha did when he was um, practicing and trying to become you know, super ascetic, and he was trying to eat one grain of rice a day. It's to honor that and to keep that in our minds. The statue, of course, is, you know, the statue and all this other kind of stuff. I ring the bell whenever I make the offerings because it's kind of like it settles the end of my offering system when I do my prostrations. I'll do three bells, and then we'll um, uh, make the offerings, and then our three bells, three, three bows, make the offerings, and then a bow at the end with a bell at the end. So that's kind of the way I do mine for this style, when I do this style. There's other styles, and I'll show you in a few minutes. Hey guys, so here we are at the altar, and I'm going to explain to you the four main offerings that I give and why. And it's all about, there's no real right answer or wrong answer. You saw the other video with the, uh, the eight offerings, the kind of Tibetan one. and Really, there doesn't have to be any offerings, but you know, we're offering something as kind of part of our meditation, part of our way of being mindful and doing practice. So these are the four that I do. I do one is a candle, and the candle is light to dispel the darkness, okay? And it's to brighten the world and those kind of ideas. So I think about that when I'm placing this and setting this. Um, the second one is water. Water is pure. Water is clean. We want to try to clean up ourselves, clean up our act, and settle and let that still and all of our um, frustrations and stuff settle to the bottom. And that's kind of our mind. We want to be still like water and clear like water. And then over here is food. And this is for, um, so we don't have monks that walk around here and asking for alms necessarily. So uh, I do this as a dana, it's called. And we're leaving an offering symbolically for the monks. Now we don't waste any of this stuff. Uh, the candle, of course, burns away. But the, um, the water I use for plants. And the apple, I'll usually either eat it myself later on or I'll cut it up and... Um, uh, give it to the rabbits, something like that outside. Now the fourth one that I have on here, which you can't really see, is behind the green tara here, is, is over here we have a flower. And the flower, um, even though that one's mechanical, I don't get good fresh ones. Fresh ones are obviously the best, because that's going to give us our sense of change and impermanence. And they're so beautiful when they're young and fresh, and then they wilt and die. Okay, But, you know, I'm trying to not uh, kill a bunch of flowers either. So it's just as easy to have a, an electric one probably causes more damage anyway, but whatever. So there we go. There's our four uh, offerings. And remember, we're, we're making an offering um, for the Buddha, for the enlightenment, not of, of just him, but of ourselves, too. And we're not making a worshiping. This is not a sacrifice or anything like that to get good um, mojo or something from the Buddha. We're using the Buddha statue as an example of how to be. We want to be like this. And how is this, you know, if we look at him, his face, we see that the eyes are gently closed, he's very relaxed, the mouth is in a small smile, um, he's sitting upright in the meditation posture, and he's got his hands folded in his, in his lap here, we can see with the uh, thumbs gently touching, that's the meditation mudra, if you will. And um, so we're using that as an example. So anyway, this is Sean over at the Center Path, and just showing you some of the uh, altar setups. If there's any questions or anything, let me know down at the bottom. Um, subscribe, 
wherever that is, and uh, leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let me know how you like it or if you don't like it or if you have questions or you know why we do this or what other things we can do, and I'll make a video based on that or I'll add some other stuff to it. So anyway, hope to talk to you soon. Hope to see you back here on the path. There we go. Thanks. Bye.